Well, Stevie Nicol, we love a good overreaction mm. in the English Premier League. We have a small sample size, just one game. But after Arsenal won on Friday night, they, their fans thought, we're going to win the league. They were all excited. Palace fans were devastated. And then it continued throughout the weekend. So we're going to do a section about overreacting to just one set of results. So if someone was sat alongside you at ESPN FC and came out with one of the four things that I'm about to come out with, tell me if you think it's a huge overreaction or if you think there's a possibility that it might actually happen based on things that took place over the weekend. We're going to start with Erling Haaland. Two goals against West Ham. He's off and running. Best thing since sliced bread. And he's going to break Mohamed Salah's Premier League goal-scoring record. What do you think? I've got no argument. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, <laughs> please please give me... There's only one reason that that sticks out that could stop him doing it, and that's injury. You know, last year at Dortmund, he had a couple of injuries that kept him out for quite a lengthy period of time uh, on both occasions. And so for me, that would be the only thing because, listen, he, he, he played well at the weekend. He scored two goals. He was pretty rotten against Liverpool and probably could have scored two goals then as well. So regardless of how he plays, this guy's always going to get chances. Uh, and God forbid the team that he actually stars against how many goals he's going to get. So it really isn't it really isn't crazy to suggest that he could break the goal-scoring record of Mo Salah. Uh, mm. And as I started off saying, other than injury, I, I can't come up with a reason why it's not possible. 32 goals is the record to break. It's certainly doable. And I don't think that's the most ridiculous overreaction to no, something that happened at the weekend. Now, number two is an interesting one because... When Spurs went a goal down to Southampton, the Spurs fans are thinking, all these new signings, good new signings, and, and we're behind Harry Kane, Harry had a touch. Then they win the game by four goals to one. They look really good. So the overreaction to this one, with Liverpool failing to win at Fulham, was that Spurs are going to finish above Liverpool. I sense <laughs> you might be slightly different from your answer to the first one with this one. Uh, yes. I mean, you... <laughs> Well, let me put it another way. Spurs opened the season last year beating Manchester City. That's right. So, <laughs> cool your jets. They've beaten Southampton. They beat Man City and they couldn't, they couldn't get it done. Uh, so, how are they going to do it beating Southampton? Look, yes, there's no question that Spurs um, had a better side, or certainly a better squad than they were last year. Uh, they were a little inconsistent. Yes, they beat Man City. But then they went on to have such a roller coaster ride of of playing fantastic football like they did at the weekend, and then just losing games against nobody. The question is that we don't have the answer to is is that consistency going to be there from the first mm. game to the last game? And we cannot, after one game, turn round and say that that's the case because not only of what I said about last year but really because of what what plagued Spurs last season. Yes, they got a better squad, but does that mean they're going to be more consistent uh, on the field of play? Nobody knows that, that answer, I and mean, you certainly can't turn around and say yes. And, and the opposite side of the coin, if you think because Liverpool were just rotten at the weekend, they're going to be rotten for the rest of the season, then you can forget mm. that. The fact is, that's probably the worst game that I can remember under under Klopp, including the team he took over. So there's no way they're going to be as bad. they still got something out of the game. So, yeah, I mean, this one is a complete overreaction. So is that the first Stevie Nichols behave yourself, son, of this overreaction? Segment? That's a complete behave yourself, no question. Behave yourself for that one. This is an intriguing one. Eric Ten Hag will not last the season at Manchester United. Is that an overreaction? Is it a ridiculous overreaction? Or could there be something in that? You know, I get the impression that he wouldn't be fired because there, there, there comes a point of the, the, 
well, I think that that point has come at United where you just can't turn around now and, and blame the manager. As poor, I think, as the previous managers have been, there comes a time when you, you have to change the playing squad to give anybody a chance, regardless of who the manager is. And so, from that point of view, I don't see Ten Hag being sacked between now and the end of the season. However, if if this negativity and this drama and these bad performances just roll on and roll on and roll on, there's probably more chance that Ten Hag just turns around and says, you know what, I can't deal with this. Because quite clearly, what's going on above them isn't helping them. The fact of the signings they've made that has not changed their team at all is a worry if you're the manager. The fact that you cannot get players in who are better than the ones you have is another problem. And when is that going to change? And so there's probably more chance of Ten Hag saying he's had enough than there is of him getting the sack, I would suggest. I think that's well put. And I think that a huge overreaction would be Man United getting rid of Ten Hag. I don't think that's going to happen, but I think you're, you're spot on. I don't think he would walk, but I think if he is no longer the manager at Manchester United before the end of the season, it's his doing and not the club's. OK, the fourth and final overreaction from the weekend. A lot of people saying, well, the three that are going down are the three that have just come up. And now, a lot of those same people saying, I can see all three or maybe at least two of the three of the promoted sides managing to stay up after Fulham did really well against Liverpool, Bournemouth beating a very poor Aston Villa and Forest, albeit they've spent a lot of money, they were poor, didn't really have a shot on target really against Nick Pope and Newcastle. But the overreaction is all three of the promoted sides from the Championship stay up this season. What say you? I say that anybody that thinks that needs to go and get an MRI. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, there's not a chance. It's never happened and it's never happening. There's not a chance. Zero. Three teams. Those three teams are going to stay up. Listen, Bournemouth won at the weekend, but even their manager, Parker, is saying that the squad isn't good enough. I mean, that's really what you want to hear for your manager. Fulham couldn't be a rotten Liverpool side. A rotten Liverpool side. And other than Mitrovic, I don't know where the goals are coming from. Forrest may pick up points at home, but they showed away from home at Newcastle that they are not the same side as they are at home. Away from home and at Newcastle, they looked a little hesitant. They looked a little unsure. They looked as though they weren't quite. They weren't. They weren't comfortable in the surroundings, uh, and so. Right now, I'm wondering if any of them will stay up. But I'll tell you what: mm. there's not a chance that the three of them stay up. Not a chance. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.